So after being on this journey to get out of debt for a little while, I've slowly been finding ways to kind of make my life better without spending money, without getting stuck in this endless cycle of buying decor, clothing, skin products to try to make my life better. So when I say that these are ways that you can improve your life completely without money, that's not entirely true. I'm making the assumption that anyone watching this video probably has money set aside for a food budget, probably has a television or a phone, and you know has access to the internet or budgets and pays for access to the internet. So some of the things that I talk about in this video, you know, actually are completely free of cost, but some of the things I talk about are dependent on the idea that you have basic necessities and utilities available to you. And while the proof that some of these things work is just that subjectively, when these different uh, ideas are implemented, usually you feel better. I'm going to try to cite, you know, different uh, medical or scientific papers or websites um, just to kind of give a little bit more credibility to these ideas. So if you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Rebecca. I make videos chronicling my family's journey to get out of over $110,000 worth of debt. I also make videos on my personal journey to become more minimalistic, um, DIY videos, videos on small space living, budgeting, all that kind of stuff. So if you enjoy that type of content, welcome. So first way to improve your life without a lot of money, learning how to cook simple meals well. So when you don't have a lot of money, learning to cook for yourself becomes extremely important and not just cooking for yourself but you know meal planning and meal prepping are equally important when i'm uh, doing meal planning i find that i kind of put the same meals on repeat um you know from one week to the next and this is just a good way for me to make sure that I'm using up all of my ingredients and making the most of my food budget. But this repetition also makes me a better cook and makes the meals that I cook for myself and for my family taste better and better. So in my opinion, you know, good tasting food improves life immensely. Cooking and eating is obviously you know, a necessity, but it's also a art form and a craft that can be refined over time as you do it again and again. Knowing that you can make something that tastes really good at home definitely takes the sting out of having limited resources. Like, yeah, you can't go to In-N-Out every day, but <laughs> knowing that you can make something that tastes good at home you know, makes things kind of feel a little bit better. And cooking at home is so much better for your health in general as well. So a Harvard Health blog entry from 2018 said this, we already know that the more people cook at home, the healthier their diet, the fewer calories they consume, and the less likely they are to be obese or develop type two diabetes. And even if you're making comfort food at home, um, chances are that you're using way less sodium, fat, sugar than, you know, they would put into the same food if you were to order it out at a restaurant. So the second way that you can improve your life tremendously without money is exercise. And a quick disclaimer, I'm not a physician. Um, definitely check with your uh, personal physician before you start any kind of exercise program. This video is just intended as um, entertainment and it is not medical advice. So you don't need a gym membership to start exercising. You don't need weights even. You don't need any kind of equipment really. Um, if you have access to the internet and YouTube, there are thousands upon thousands of free videos that you can follow along to that don't use any equipment. So I've mentioned before, I personally really like Lucy Lismore and she does a ton of calisthenics or like body weight workout videos and they're just you know great resources to get fit for free which tremendously improves your life so the cdc says this regular physical activity is one of the most important things you can do for your health being physically active can improve your brain health help manage weight reduce the risk of disease strengthen bones and muscles, and improve your ability to do everyday activities. And speaking of the mental benefits of exercise, the CDC mentions 
Uh, some benefits of physical activity on brain health happen right after a session, moderate to vigorous physical activity. Uh, benefits include improved thinking or cognition uh, and reduced short-term feelings of anxiety. Regular physical activity can help you keep your thinking, learning, and judgment skills sharp as you age. It can also reduce your risk of depression and anxiety and help you sleep better. And there's literally, you know, hundreds of studies on the internet going over all these different benefits of exercise. I mean, in short, exercise just really <laughs> improves your life in almost every uh, aspect imaginable. And it really can be accomplished at no cost. In the same category, there's stretching and yoga. So stretching, which goes hand in hand with exercise, and is even a form of exercise, um, you know, when you do yoga, has a slew of health benefits. And although the best way to avoid injury when you're learning yoga practice would be to, you know, join a yoga studio um, and learn, you know, one-on-one -on -one with somebody. I'm learning at home for free and I feel like, you know, even with that, I'm benefiting immensely. So I've mentioned in a previous video, um, yoga with Adrian is awesome. You know, that's what I usually do. I try to do it at least like five times a week. It's so good and it's free provided that you have, um, you know, access to the internet and either a phone or like a smart TV. I really recommend her videos. And an article on WebMD describes the benefits of regular yoga practice. It says, <clears throat> yoga can improve balance, flexibility, range of motion, and strength. And the same article on WebMD also talks about the mental health benefits of yoga, saying yoga can release helpful brain chemicals, most exercise, triggers the release of feel-good chemicals in the brain. These mood-boosting chemicals include brain messengers such as dopamine, serotonin, uh, and norepinephrine. Although yoga movements are slow and controlled, uh, they still elevate your heart rate, make the muscles work hard, and stimulate the release of brain chemicals. As a result, yoga can make you happier. And yet another scientific journal mentions uh, these potential benefits of yoga as well. Um, other beneficial effects might involve a reduction of distress, blood pressure, and improvements in resilience, mood, and metabolic regulation. And I personally have noticed a big difference in how I feel in my mood, in my stress level, uh, since I started yoga at home. And then there's just, you know, walking. It's free. <laughs> um, you know, it can be done outside in nature, typically, which has its own health benefits attached to it. You can do it alone, you can do it with family, either one kind of has its um, pros. I find walking, you know, by myself kind of helps me calm down and focus and think. And then sometimes after dinner, my family will go for a walk through our neighborhood as kind of a way to bond with each other, uh, you know, in a healthful way. <laughs> An article on the Mayo Clinic's website uh, talks about the health benefits of walking, walking briskly. And it says walking briskly can maintain a healthy weight and lose body fat, prevent or manage various conditions, including heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, cancer, and type 2 diabetes improve cardiovascular fitness, strengthen your bones and muscles, improve muscle endurance, increase energy levels, improve your mood, cognition, memory, and sleep, improve your balance and coordination, strengthen your immune system, reduce stress and tension. So both avenues of walking by yourself or with family usually allow you to connect with nature. It's usually done outside, as I mentioned, and that is also very good for your health, being outside in nature. And it's, again, usually free. <laughs> so one scientific article discussing the benefits of, you know, walking through nature said this, participants exhibited significant increases in memory span after the nature walk. Participants also showed increases in mood. And then on the UC Davis website, it mentions studies have shown that being in nature has a positive effect on our bodies by reducing cortisol levels, muscle tension, and demands on our cardiovascular systems, lowers heart rate and blood pressure. Being out in nature often may lead to lower rates of heart disease. The great outdoors can also help you increase your vitamin D level, which is important for your bones, blood cells, and immune system. The next way to improve your life without money is reading. 
um, and doing this by utilizing the library, which is free. So a WebMD article mentions, reading is an excellent method of reducing stress. A 2009 study from MindLab International at the University of Sussex found that reading was able to reduce stress levels by 68%. And the same article mentions, studies consistently show that participating in activities and engaging your brain, including reading, can help reduce the chance of developing dementia. And also per the article, reading can help with increasing compassion, promoting problem solving, developing empathy, and enhancing self-awareness. And who doesn't want to be more self-aware? <laughs> so going to the physical library obviously is free, but if you do already pay for internet, I do recommend a couple of free library apps, uh, Hoopla or Libby. Um, these are both free library apps. You can access and read free library books on your phone or tablet, which for some people is easier or preferable than you know going into a physical building. So the next way to improve your life without any money is gratitude journaling. So gratitude journaling, um, if you don't know or haven't guessed <laughs> from the name, is kind of a way to shift your focus from you know negative things to the positive things that are in your life. An article on positivepsychology.com mentions numerous studies are demonstrating how gratitude journaling can increase one's happiness. Others show that inflammation in one's body can decrease. Um, so you don't need anything fancy to you know gratitude journal. You can do it on scraps of paper. Um, you can do it, I've done it on like the notes app on my iPhone. You know, if you have Notion, which is a free app, you can also do gratitude journaling in Notion. And then there's a free app called Gratitude Jar that's pretty cool. That's for this too that, you know, you could check out. But yeah, absolutely no need to spend money on this uh, way to improve your life. It's totally free and accessible to everybody. So another way to improve your life without money is taking care of your physical space. So keeping your home tidy and clean um, can really improve your mental health a lot. So in an article in the Journal of Environmental Psychology, it mentions that the results of a study on the relationship between an environment and clutter, that clutter had a negative impact on psychological home and subjective well-being. And in an article in Real Simple magazine, it says recent studies have shown that clutter in our homes is associated with higher cortisol levels, our stress hormone. And again, this way to improve your life, I mean, it does um, presuppose that you do have, you know, a little bit of money in your budget set aside for uh, cleaning products. But I did a, a video recently where I made a budget uh, cast out soap cleaner. Um, that's like all purpose. It's a very uh, cheap, effective, non-toxic cleaner that you can make at home. Um, so really cleaning your space and keeping things tidy um, doesn't have to cost really a lot of money at all. But I mean, even if, you know, you really don't have money for cleaner, you know, you can't clean your space as much as you would like to or as thoroughly as you would like to, just picking up after yourself, keeping things organized and simplified, that can really go a long way to keeping your space tidy as well. And getting rid of things that, you know, um, you don't use anymore or are no longer functional in your space can go a long way in making your space uh, work better for you and stay tidy. I think the phrase is addition by subtraction. <laughs> And then the next way that you can improve your life without spending any money is taking care of yourself. But let's talk about getting enough good sleep. So getting enough good quality sleep is definitely a way that you can improve your life for free. So more and more studies have shown how important you know, getting good quality sleep is in improving our lives. So from the book, Sleep Disorders and Sleep Deprivation, an unmet public health problem, it mentions the cumulative long-term effects of sleep loss and sleep disorders have been associated with a wide range of deleterious health consequences, including an increased risk of hypertension, diabetes, obesity, depression, heart attack, and stroke. So how do you improve your sleep quality and quantity? Well, the CDC recommends being consistent with when you go to bed and when you wake up because I have a, a teenage stepson and a toddler in the house. Our sleep schedules here actually are very regimented, but even after they both go to bed for the night and that's really kind of one of the only <laughs> uh, blocks of free time that I have during the day, I still try to make going to bed at a reasonable time a priority. The CDC also recommends making your making sure your bedroom is cool, 
dark, relaxing, and as free of distractions as possible, like TV or, you know, using phones or tablets. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you kind of some fresh perspective on how to enjoy your life and make your life better without money. If you did enjoy this video, um, please consider liking it, giving it a thumbs up, um, and maybe even subscribing to my channel. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.